All right, let's get this party started. Matt, you came here two times in the last three seasons before this, came up short both times against some legendary teams we've talked about, Tony Jefferson, Al Equipa. This time around, you got the trophy right there. Your players are celebrating. What's this feeling like for you? Oh, I mean, for me, um, and I typically don't really talk too much about myself, it's six years of sacrifice and dedicating practically my life and career to it. Um, and to see my family and all the sacrificing that they do to let me do this, you know, that it makes it all worthwhile. Um, and so, you know, for, for, for me, it just, it, it validates all the time and energy away from my family that I have. And that's, that's what I think of when, what this victory means for, for, for myself. Um, for the program, you know, it is not only these guys finishing the job um, when it comes to Whippeal Championship, but the way that they conducted the business this year of just the even-killed methodicalness, um, it's one for really the kids that have came through over the past six years. I mean, you know, it, it's what I'm so impressed with what these kids did this year was there wasn't any selfish attitude or demeanor at all when it came to trying to get that trophy. You know, I truly felt like they did it for themselves, they did it for their coaches, and hell, they did it for all the kids that, that were this close. Um, so it's program one, guys. Um, and, you know, every coach is going to sit up here with a microphone in their face and say that they're proud of their team. And I'm extremely proud of the team and what we did out there. But I'm just proud as hell of these kids and how they conduct business. Man, it's, it's not easy getting kids to do everything you tell them to do. Um, it's not easy getting these kids out there and putting four hours a day in and getting yelled at and being uncomfortable. We, we tried to make this year as uncomfortable as possible. Um, and, and it just says a lot to these kids because they just bought it, they didn't say a word, they shut their mouth and they just kept coming back for more. So um, as every coach would with a microphone in their face, I'm, I'm extremely proud of them, but I'm proud of the way that they did it more than anything. Well, what was your defense able to do today? Really the same thing that we did all year. Our defense has been phenomenal, you know. And it all starts in my mind with our linebacker play. You know, we got we got inside and outside linebackers that can cover. We got inside and outside linebackers that can fill. We got inside outside linebackers that can hit windows, scrape over top, and cover kids in man coverage. When you got when you got four kids like that, and then when you got two extra on the sideline and maybe even three that could come in and you don't skip a beat. That's when you're going to have a special defense. And up front, they did their job. And again, I, it's cliche, it's corny, but I don't know how to really articulate it other than they did their job. That's what they did. And it's just such a complete team effort. These guys, I mean, no one ever complains about touches or interceptions or stats. They just do. They're doers. Um, and the beautiful thing about that trophy right there that we've been coveting and chasing for so long that's just a an extension. That's just a that's just an extension of more football. This is the the cherry on top. Playing more football is truly the reward. Matt, your team was down late in the second quarter. You got that touchdown pass to go ahead. What allowed that play to work, and how significant? Was well, that? listen. Every week, it's it's trying to figure out how to put number 25 in an advantageous position. And we came in this game knowing that they were going to key off and be very aggressive on our screen run game. Um, so we, we didn't even really bother with it. Um, we wanted to try to get the ball to Quentin in a magnitude of different ways, like always. And teams prepare for him. You, you'd be crazy not to. Um, you know, and, and that was our main red zone play. It really was a seven-on-seven seven play that we haven't ran until this time. So think about that coming full circle. I mean, that was our main seven-on-seven seven play. And we kind of hit it in our pocket the whole year. We haven't ran that play once, have we? No, no. Saved it for this game, and we were able to hit him on a corner route, um, you know, to, to give us that score. So... Um, you know, that worked out for us. We were, we were fortunate. Now, can we talk real quick about, you mentioned Quentin Martin, you know, you want to get him the ball, and a pun return is one way to do it when they finally kick it to him. Have you ever seen a return quite like the 51-yarder that he took all the way across the field for a game-changing touchdown? I would say yes, the one against Thomas Jefferson, but no, that was pretty phenomenal out there. So, um, you know, not to inflate his head too much. I will say this, after we watched out on the iPad, it was phenomenal blocking. That was a team 
punt return. Anthony Cruz, man, he was in a precarious situation. He put his hands up. He didn't touch a guy. That was that's a huge heads up play by that kid to to show his body to not get a to not get a penalty. So when you sit back and watch it, there's a lot of people there. Steve Macheska had a big block on that. I mean, it was beautiful. And then Quest just Quinn showed you who he was with the complimentary aspect of the team. Got a question for Braden. Uh, you, you were kind of in a battle of quarterback early in the season, certainly going into the season, uh, and then Matt has decided you were going to be the guy. How did your confidence grow from the start of the year up until this point? Um, I'd say grew tremendously. There was a little uh, different, I'd say, in the beginning, not knowing who was going to be starting or um, having to battle for that position. But now at the end of the season, I'd say I'm pretty confident in myself. Question that could be answered by any of the players. I mean, you haven't done much playing from behind over the last eight, nine weeks. I don't think you've been winning about 40, 50 points a game. Now you fall behind 7 nothing in the big stage here at Akersher Stadium against a great Avonworth team. Was there any, you know, feeling on the sideline of, wow, like, what do we do now? Like, we, we haven't been down in a long time. I mean, it's always 0-0 zero, zero in our heads. So, like, we just got to keep doing our job and get it all done. And that's what we did today. And I'm very proud of everyone on the stage and coach. That's all. And listen, we knew that it wasn't going to be a, hey, let's get up 21 nothing like it's been over the past five, six weeks. And I, I think I did a good job of articulating that to these kids this week. It was going to be a fourth quarter game. Um, so, you know, it's not like you practice anything special with it. You just pound it into their heads that it's going to be a slugfest. And we just had to keep on hitting and hitting and hitting. And, and, and the goal was to wear them down a little bit because we knew they're a physical team. They're a big team. They're, that's a good ball club that we went up against. Um, and the kids embraced that uncomfortable mentality this week. I, you know, this was a game that, to be honest with you, if we didn't win, it would have been devastating. I mean, we probably put 35 hours into preparation this week. I mean, we were, you know, we were at that school. I mean, more than our houses in, in some retrospect. And and again, that's a credit to these guys. I was not a very nice individual this whole week. Okay, but th they just take it and they go with it. They don't question it. They don't. They don't bat an eyelash at it. They just take it because they understand the process. And again, that's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of them for being able to, in this society, you know, it, it, we everyone's feelings get hurt so much. These kids been in uncomfortable situations, uncomfortable coaching all year, and the way they handled it, it's worth it because they got a trophy in front of them. And, and Quinn, uh, question for you. What you see on that uh, 51 yard punt return? Uh, you know, you made a, a really incredible cut off on that uh, touchdown run. Uh, I saw that the left sideline, it was clear, you know, I got as close as I can and I kept my feet in balance and I knew they thought I was going out of balance, but I did everything I can to stay in. And then I cut back because I saw the momentum coming towards me and then I saw nothing but green. Quinn, is that one of those things that everything kind of, especially for a player like you, everything just kind of slows down in the moment there as you're running past through everybody on yeah, the field? Yeah, basically, you know, it's just, you just do you, you don't think, you just go. What was going through your mind that when you realized after watching him kick it out of bounds every time before that that the ball was actually coming your way and you might have a chance here? Uh, I was like, I'm taking it back. <laughs> I was very excited to get that punt. And listen, that, he doesn't get many punts. I mean, and I'm not saying because teams kick away. I mean, if we felt comfortable at any given time in, in any opponent, we don't allow him to, to return the ball. We want the offense to take it and, and, and obviously amount some drives because, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, if he's going to touch it, you're, you know, it's 50-50. It's going to be a very positive, um, a very positive, uh, advantageous forward positioning for us. So, I mean, ironically, is he he hasn't caught many punts this year. So, for him to do that, um, you know, and be able to have that return, like I said, that's key. And we needed that. We needed we needed something out of our specials. And how about my kicker? You know, my kicker was great today, um, and he's a kid that. You know, I don't want to say that it's been up and down with him all season, but I mean, you're not gonna, he's not gonna wow you with any stat lines. And then you come into the, the Whippeal Championship, and that's a pressure moment. And for him to be able to perform like that, he did a great job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think of this too. Think of these kids and the pressure. You know, this season's been about, oh, you're gonna win it out. You're gonna win the Whippeal. You're gonna win the Whippeal. That's a lot of pressure for these kids to have to constantly battle day in and day out. And again, they just, Slow heartbeat, went to work, didn't bat an eyelash, and they did a great job for that. This is a question for all the players, but whenever you have a, you know, like Quentin did that really explosive punt return, what kind of what kind of spark does that provide for you? Because I know there's quite an uptick in your play after something like that happens. Uh, I would say 
it really just brings the juice throughout the team. It keeps everybody's energy up. So that's why it just gives everybody the motive to keep thinking big, to have the big place come. Matt, was there a point of this season now looking back that you considered the turning point that allowed you to get this championship? I think the TJ game. I think, um, you know, those for, that loss to McKeesport and loss to Penn Trafford, um, they were tough ones. I mean, they really were. Um, and, you know, in retrospect, you know, they were tight battles. The, the game was decided in the fourth quarter. Um, it wasn't like we weren't in them, and it wasn't like that we couldn't have maybe pulled that one off against Penn Trafford. So for them to lose two and then have to go on the road to Thomas Jefferson, um, the way they were able to, you know, pull that off, get 21 up, um, I knew, like, okay, that was the momentum. Now now the spark was there. And, again, I think we're so expecting what we do every year, just win 11 games, win 11 games. There was a lot of turnover on offense. You know, like our defense was pretty solidified coming back in in terms of who our returners were. Um, we knew, like, okay, our defense has all the traffic and to be pretty good. I mean, I had five to six new starters on offense, you know. You look at a guy like Braden, and to me, he's the unsung hero. I mean, he's the guy that distributes the ball. He, he's the guy that gets dirty and runs the ball a little bit. He's the guy that, you know, puts the ball where it needs to be. Um, and, and you look at him, he split all those reps all summer, the scrimmages. It was going to take a little bit of time for him to get acclimated and playing McKeesport right off the bat and Penn Trafford, you know, that's not the games that typically you can acclimate yourself to, but he did a hell of a job. He battled. And you know what? It doesn't matter if something goes bad. He just comes back for more. I mean, he just has such a cool, calm demeanor. It's unbelievable. So um, not to get too over a man aside on Braden Locks, I'm just proud of the way that he handles everything and how he's such a team-first kid and how he just operates in such a, a, such a calm disposition. I mean, I think it's almost soothing in terms of everyone else. Never gets rattled, and he's tough as hell. And do you think you've ever had a game with a, or in high school at least, or any that you can remember with a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a punt return touchdown? And if you're going to do it, it's, I guess it's the best place to do it. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure this is my first one with all three, so yeah. Call it a hat trick, I guess? Yes, sir. <laughs> Matt, what was the key to you guys uh, playing defensively yeah. tonight, and especially after Avalon scored on their, uh, their opening possession, their second possession, third they're Yeah, I mean, listen, they're tough to defend. I mean, you know, I think the key for us is we just wanted aggressive linebacker play. We needed to be able to hit windows, scrape over top. We really wanted to try to, to get our linebackers meeting those backs at the line of scrimmage because we knew if, if we could kind of stop them from getting started, that would be the key. Um, and then you saw they can throw the ball well. I mean, you know, a big part of the game plan is how do you stop 6-7? And again, I you know I think Anthony Cruz did a pretty good job on it when Q wasn't on him. And there's times where you want Q on him, but then they got some other complimentary receivers that require some attention as well. Um, I just think they did what they've done all season. That's just play aggressive. The defensive line held down the fort, allowed the linebackers to flow and scrape, and, and that's and that's to me what propelled the defense. And then think of the secondary. A lot of batted passes down. A lot of tight man coverage with the, with those kids. So again, just. A complete effort by everybody defensively. Uh, yeah. uh, for any of the players, Coach Tucker talked about how he wasn't a very nice person this week. Um, I know, you know, dealing with him all the time, how ridiculous and organized he is. How prepared were you guys just for this game, and how do you, how well do you feel this coaching staff prepares you for big games like this? Um, yeah, we practice <laughs> really hard and uh, stay long hours, and pretty much know everything with them they teach us everything like just fine details everything from basic fundamentals this thing you might see with, with everything yeah yeah we, <clears throat> we probably went over like 20 hours of film this week uh we knew what they were going to run and what defense we were going to be in and it just it, it all worked out so we put the time in and things work out i would say it gets funny when uh offense coach or he's with the defense coach about <laughs> who's getting more time time and film <laughs> who's stealing time who's getting film after practice so you gotta be selfish oh I would say every time. coach sure. every coach is going crazy and again I think that's a key thing I'd be remiss to I mean and again I, I tend to over romanticize things I get that I do but my, my staff, to me, and, and again, I don't have anybody to compare them to. I think they're one of the best in the state. And I hate saying in the state, like, 
like I said, there's no measuring stick for that, but I just can't imagine a group of guys that are so knit tight together. No one's looking to be the next whatever. No one's looking to take a job somewhere else. You know, everybody just wants to win and everybody just wants to do their <coughs> part. And there's a lot of guys on my staff that don't get paid. You know, there's, we have a lot of coaches and we haven't got a lot of paychecks. Um, so think about that and how the time and energy that they sacrifice. And, you know, it's for the love of the game. It's for the kids. It's for that trophy. So, you know, just super proud of my coaches. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've just done a great job. Um, you know, and I'm, and I'm happy for someone, especially like Coach Barish, right? A Bell Vernon guy born and raised, you know, living there. Lived through the bad times, coached in the bad times. Hard to go get a gallon of milk at the Superstore because everybody's <laughs> a armchair quarterback, you know. Um, so for him to finally get one, it's, it's well-deserved for him as well. For any of the players, but you know, we talk about that four game to not let the start of the season. You know, LH, Ben Trapper, Dean McKee, Sport, Thomas Jefferson. How did that kind of prepare you guys for this moment, and even for you know the state playoffs and, and making a, a run for the state championship here? Well, you had to battle adversity at first, and they were some tough teams, but once you get that spark against Thomas Jefferson, I think it's just a roll from there. You guys even learned through the, the defeats, too? Oh. Close games against two good teams in the key sports center. Yeah, I think we did. We definitely did not play our game off, especially our offensive line against the key sports. And, I mean, that TJ game really brought us as a team all together for that win. And it's just been up since. But there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of situations when you go down to like that. Teams mm-hmm. could implode. People yep. could get negative. I think maybe some people on the outside maybe imploded a little bit. I think there's some people in maybe you know in the in the yep. in the in the area code that maybe were losing their mind with it. But I, again, that that's what makes this team who they are. Like, I never came to practice one day wondering whether their mental disposition was losing two games. You know, I mean, and again, like I said, that's that's just who they are. Um, and again, the pressure. You know, they, they were annoyed at the Whitfield Championship, um, you know, almost a year ago when, when all this stuff came down. And whatnot. And that, again, that's not an easy thing, the pressure to constantly go through. Um, and then to lose too early on, you know, those four games, I think, truly just made us better. Yep. And that's why we wanted those four games. And I'll gladly, I'll gladly lose one or two at the beginning if that means that we get to hoist that trophy at the end. Yes, yeah. sir. Steve, hey, you're nodding your head a little bit when he talks about that pressure. Talk about it from your guys' perspective. You know, when the realignment came out, everybody, like you said, they anointed you that uh, you were going to be here. How, how is that for you guys, you know, in your own words? Um, I mean, it's crazy because, like, we were all – like, everyone wanted to stay in 4A and, and like, we uh, – like we didn't have enough kids, so we we went down and we just we're winning every game now. I don't know, do that. I don't know if that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I, I, it, listen, it's as simple as this. There's there's a lot of a lot of people that uh, wanted to cast stones and a lot of people that wanted to take shots at me for it. Um, for some people, people are ignorant and don't understand how classifications work. We didn't go down. We played the number the state of Pennsylvania gave us. We didn't choose to play up. Yeah. And, um, you know, I got 39 kids on my team. I'm not saying that's a reason, but, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. the point being is this. People can say whatever they want about me or, 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 or deciding not to play up. But at the end of the day, these kids are champions. And that's never going to be taken away from them. And no. they did it the right way. Like, if there's a book or a recipe of how to do it, I'm pretty sure these kids could be poster childs for it because they did it. So, um, again, just proud of them. And I truly feel like a little bit of their spark is for the kids that came through. You know, when we think of this victory, I think of, God, I think of kids clear back to Nick Schweitzer, um, Riley Wyan, um, Logan Hoffman, Ben Cole, you know, um, Luke Durgan, um, you know, Hayden Bear and Anthony Rebar. There's a thousand guys I'm not naming that I should that are just popping. This is... To me, it's as much as it's for them, it's for those kids who did everything the right way, and we just couldn't finish. We just couldn't get across that that finish line. Um, so a part of this is is redemption, I hope, for those guys, too. Coach, real quick, going back to Braden, you mentioned uh, what he brought offensively, uh, but defensively as well, you know, in the trenches, you know, you see a lot of quarterbacks playing defensive back or wherever it may be, but I think he brought a lot defensively as well. I mean, he's definitely not fast enough to be a defensive back. Um, <laughs> but again, what can you say about the kid? I mean, he has all the measurables. He's a big kid. He's a tough kid. You know, I, again, um, 
I'd like to think my guys are tough, and I think the quarterback playing five techniques kind of an example of that. Right? He's a savage. Drew, you spoke two weeks ago. I'm oh, oh, sorry. Thanks, go ahead. Um, well, it's a little different going from quarterback to defensive end, <laughs> having to put the gloves on and get physical with kids, especially after running hard on offense. And you get a little tired, but you just got to push through. It's not easy pulling a ball, getting hit, and then be like, okay, go. Okay, now go reach, you know, defend the reach, you know, squeeze and take on that guard. So, again, it just shows his toughness. Q, you uh, mentioned two weeks ago after the quarterfinal win, how important it was for this group of seniors to get a championship. How important it was to you. Talk a little bit what that means to you and what this means to you in terms of that. Uh, walk out this group of seniors, you know, ever since I was a freshman, they've always been by my side, always been there for me, and always helped me with everything, ever since I was younger. And they, I was a freshman, they were sophomores. And this means a lot to me because we put blood, sweat, and tears into this every day for, what, three, four hours straight. So, you know, it, it means a lot. And we're competitors. We want to win. And that's what we did. You know, it's good to see some of those kids. I mean, you know, I think of a kid like Dom Sasco who, you know, goes out there, has a hell of a game tonight, was great all season. Um, you know, that kid at some juncture was going to play. This kid right here did play one year. That kid was never going to play if it wasn't for me harping on him. But my point being is just think of that. That's like life, right? That's like what it these kids go back, and of course it made sense that they played, right? But three of those seven seniors, they might not have even played football. And I mean, how ironic is it for that to transpire the way that they did and for them to, to win it? I mean, it, that's a story in itself, in my mind. And my last question for you, because I know we're keeping you guys a long time. Oh, but, good. Um, we talked about how last year, the undefeated season, to get to this point, to get to Heinz, and then just to, to have it unravel and lose <laughs> that championship game, yeah. you don't have any memories like uh, fond memories of looking back yeah. on that season because you're only haunted by the loss is it safe to say now you're going to be able when it's all said and done to look back and cherish this season forever a hundred percent you know and like i said there's so many special things last year that transpired and it just it mucked it all up that loss um and last year we hit, we, we hit the ground running so fast and we were so good and then injuries here and injuries there and then, i mean we limped in the hinds this year was different you know we were practically healthy for the most part getting down here um and again, it, the, the, it just was, it was a little anticlimactic at most points of the season. And, and that's fine because I think it just fit in with the mentality of like, we're just here to do business. You know, it was a very business-like approach this year and those guys followed suit with that. But uh, yeah, it helps get that taste out of your mouth for sure. Even more motivated now to try and battle for another trophy? Sir, we need the state. We need it. So a good point, and like I said to the kids probably twice today, you know, this is the cherry on the top. The, the real reward is getting rewarded another Sunday film breakdown, yep. another Monday practice, um, and, and that's the key. You know, I think you, especially for me and my coaches, you, you're around these kids so much, um, they frustrate the crap out of you so much, but you love them so much, and it's hard to imagine a routine where you're not coming back on a Sunday and you're not coming back on a Monday. So to me, that's great. It'll go in the trophy case finally, right? But the real reward is getting able to play more and, and, and you know, getting able to compete for um, a state championship. Coach, you mentioned the health. We hear from Evan. We heard from Evan. There he what is. was it like being on the sideline? I'm sure it was a little bit challenging, but you helped the team get here, you know, for the season. So what were some of the things you were doing to kind of keep the guys going? Uh, just being there for them, like congratulating them. Uh, supporting them. Supporting them. Supporting Supporting them. Supporting. Supporting with them. And uh, just making making sure I'm there with them every step of the way. I was trying to throw you some freebies. <laughs> Flying around on the scooter. Giving and us the good thing is, you know, dogs. again, I think of it like we're rewarded another week. I mean, he he's pretty close to coming back. So that's, you know, that that's obviously a good thing as well. Um, so. Coach, how, is, how important is it for your offense to have a guy like Jake out there that can go out there and get the ugly yards when you need it? Well, I mean, I think they're beautiful yards, the yards that he gets. Um, but <laughs> we love that style of football. We love him He's running downhill. And, again, I, I think I'm blessed. I, I'm, listen, I don't claim to be no self-proclaimed uh, genius by any means. I'm blessed that I got those two kids because they're so complimentary. Whenever you're dedicating bodies to 25, that's cool because it's just going to open it up for, for 
10 behind me right there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's just a complimentary aspect. Then you add Braden into the mix, and then you got a kid like Raccoon and, you know, Evan, when Evan's, you know, obviously facilitating his role. Colton Lee, Zoe Wade, um, you know, it, it, we have very complimentary pieces, and you know you, you need that if you want to be able to, to have some hardware, and you know those guys can be drop. And again, think of our linebacker core. I mean, we've got three inside backers that are all legit, three outside backers that are all legit. Um, you know, so special group of kids. We good? Is that it? Any other questions? Shout out Coach right, Zackle. Thank you. Shout out Jeff Ogardowski. <laughs> Shout out Coach Zackle. My leg. Thanks, guys.